So we are privileged and lucky to have with us today Winona Hotter. Uh, Winona Hotter is the executive director of Food and Water Watch, who produced that video. She has worked extensively on food, water, energy, and environmental issues at the national, state, and local level. Her book, Foodopoly, The Battle Over the Future of Food and Farming in America, examines the corporate consolidation and control over our food system and what it means for farmers and consumers. Her book is available in the lobby. She'll be available afterwards for book signing, and she's here with us today to talk about her perspective. Please welcome Winona Hotter. thrilled to be in Idaho. I have spent many happy weeks in another part of Idaho up north, and I'm really glad to be down here to see what southern Idaho is like. So I have the uh, happy uh, job today of talking to people about a very weighty subject after lunch. So uh, I'm going to be a little provocative, and I'm going to talk about how we've ended up with such a dysfunctional food system where we have just a handful of companies that control every aspect of how our food is produced. But before I start, let me tell you a little bit about me because I did grow up on a farm. When I was 11, my parents who were missionaries decided that it was time to get back to the farm. And my dad had grown up uh, during the Dust Bowl on a farm in Oklahoma. And uh, even though things had been really tough there, he had a lot of good memories and romantic thoughts about farming. He'd also been one of the very early subscribers to Organic Gardening, a magazine that the De Rodale Press started putting out in the uh, 1950s. So you can imagine that my parents didn't have a whole lot of money and they started looking for a farm on the East Coast near my mother's family. And we ended up with this really ramshackle farm that uh, no one had farmed for decades, that no one had lived in the funky farmhouse for decades. We had a mile-long driveway. In fact, we had to have a dump truck to get in and out of it. And you can imagine my embarrassment, especially you young people in the front row, when my father would drop me off at school in the dump truck. So you can imagine um, um, me as an only child uh, learning how to pluck chicken feathers, how to uh, chop kindling, uh, how to squish potato bugs. Well, by the time I was 18 and ready to go away for college, I could not wait to get away from that farm. And uh, I never dreamt that I would really spend a big chunk of my life worrying about farming.